Hey, aloha, everyone. Michelle Melendez with BlossomInnerWellness.com and StandTogetherHawaii.com as well. Again, with John Jay, we just did a video and then we're talking and I'm like, oh my gosh, let's do one more because what he's sharing about Bitcoin is pretty pretty mind-blowing. So John, go ahead and share. Uh, this is John, Ace of, Ace of Coins. He's a 30-year expert in financial risk and um, he also works uh, with uh, property rights and, and a ton, ton more of, of getting the people out of the system and, and free from financial debt and enslavement. So John, thanks again. And let's talk about what you just talked about. Okay. Shared. Well, you, you mentioned property rights. So just, I want to explain to people, I'm not talking about real estate. That's not just, pro that's not the only type of property. I'm talking about the use of your money and what you choose to do with your money, when and when, how that's a property right. It's an intangible property, right? It's private. Okay. That's what I deal with. So I deal with financial risk and by changing property rights and showing people how to manage property rights, the right to spend your money whenever you feel like it, however you want, you know, buy stuff, uh, how to, how to legally avoid certain tax liabilities and then how to properly allocate your cash or capital, like how to use debt. Debt is a tool. It's not a thing that happens to you. That's bad. It's, you know, it's a tool. It, just like if I had a chainsaw and I didn't know how to use it, I probably hurt a lot of people and myself included, but if I know how to use it, I can do some pretty good things. So, so that's what we're talking about. But you're, you want to talk about the CBDC, the money system, right? So yes, here's my yes, take on big, it. Bitcoin, the blockchain, right. all of that. So my understanding of that, and it has to do with financial risk. It's in my area. And I'm a longtime computer geek. I hate to say, maybe I should say from the 80s. So my knowledge is irrelevant today. <laughs> However, I can tell you how a computer's made from sand, you know. So uh, I understand the technology. And I can tell you right now, it's military technology. Cryptography is a munition on the US military's munitions list. It's a matter of law. Uh, so cryptography is, so the blockchain is that technology. We're able to use our cell phones today, our smartphones and all this technology, Bitcoin and all that, because Clinton allowed the GPS technology to be in the private sector in 1992. They, everything starts with the military, ends with the military pretty much. They take our inventions, our ideas. We think we're brilliant. We go to the US patent office they stamp it, military gets it first before you even benefit financially, okay? That's what it's for. The government says, we'll protect your idea. No, we're gonna pay our we're gonna pay for our own protection. They'll just guarantee it. We still have to pay, right? Anyways, so they took this technology that we invented from the 40s. The internet started in 1943, I believe it was California at Berkeley with three terminals calling each other. That was the internet. Move forward to 97, I had the browser and all the pictures and all that stuff. So people are now being trained to use this technology. You don't realize it, but your phone that you're downloading all the apps on to get benefits and all this stuff, you're being trained on using QR codes in your phone and technology and military technology cryptography so that they, the CBDC will work. You are helping it. Now, and so, and who, started, who, start, and who started Bitcoin? Okay, Bitcoin, from what I understand, from what my research tells me, was created by Chase Bank in China. This And the financial interest behind it, it's not just Chase Bank in China, but there are financial interests that are adverse to your interest. And those financial interests aren't going anywhere, and they haven't changed. I don't care how they brand or market the cbdc if they call it something else it's because we've been talking about it and we've been saying how much we hate the idea of it and so the financial interests have changed the way they're marketing it make yeah. no mistake your cashier at your local grocery store is being trained he's actually training the customer on how to operate and be a cashier if you realize yeah with those self self-paying machines yeah or whatever. so the, the let me just give you a, a, a forward thing okay so the CBDC is coming. You're not going to get escape it. They're going to connect your biometric data to the use of money. Okay, this sounds really bad, but I, I'm very optimistic on what we can do. This is this is beneficial. We can use it to our advantage, just like fire. Okay, when fire was discovered, one guy said, hey, let's burn the village down next to us and take their stuff. And another guy said, well, let's build a nice modern city with it, right? That's what's going on. So this technology is coming and it's marketed to us in different ways. So don't think for one second that it's being defeated. It's, it's being integrated in our society and you're helping it along by using all this technology and you almost don't have a choice, but gosh, guys, come on, stop downloading apps and using your QR code to buy stuff. Try to use cash, you know? <laughs> I mean, at some point that'll be illegal. Um, so my, my thinking is look at 
retail operations today. Look at your shopping mall, your open air malls and things like that, that nature. And you have these giant parking lots, right? And all the big box stores. Here's my prediction. Big box stores, bye-bye. They get converted to distribution centers. You don't ever see them anymore. When you want something, you go to your phone. You have no choice. You go to your phone. I want uh, I want groceries. I want uh, clothing, whatever. I order it with my phone and it gets delivered by drone. Holy okay? shit. Now, oh. check the, you don't know where it's coming from. This is already being done, guy. by the way. Now, think about this. These huge parking lots with cars in them. Thing of the past. When they get to a point where you can't own a car, which is, I don't know how close that is, but that's why they want the electrics. The electric is destroying mm -hmm. everything. The electric is mm -hmm. a dumb idea. But anyways, so you get all this, That's you get your cars so where they can run on their own network without people. They could be run by AI and maybe some human intervention at some point. But the DOT has to be involved with this. So the cars run perpetually on the roadway or they're parked, you know, to, to conserve them. And they never, they, they never need to stop. And therefore, we don't need parking lots anymore. Because if you want a car, you got to call it on your phone and it's there. It's the next car that's not oh already been commandeered. Yeah, that's what they want to do. So goodbye retail, walk in, the, walk in the malls and going to get your Starbucks and then walk around window shopping. That's gone. It's going to be on your phone. You already see that. So what about so what about our freedoms of like these smart cities coming in? Do we have okay. any a smart power? city is a smart city is a, a rebrand of what we understand to be a concentration camp right out of World War II. So yes. When you, when you hear smart city, you understand it's a concentration camp. It's for the stupid people. Anybody who wants to live in a smart city, you're stupid, and you deserve what you get. Smart as a surveillance monitoring, I can't yeah. remember what A stands for, reporting you'll technology. Have no, you'll have no property rights. And so what what is wanting to be happening, I, I'm speaking passively because I, I'm, I'm just going to say the financial interests that want to push this, okay? They want to make it to where people, the people they let live, those people yeah. will can, can only get resources through technology. If you don't use technology, you're not getting it. It's already happening. I'm, I would try to get something at Walmart this summer, and they wouldn't sell it to me unless I use order it for my phone. It wasn't on the shelf. It was th from some other location. They didn't. They they didn't put it on the shelf. They're already doing this. They're taking products right. off the shelf, and you have to. You can only. You already know this, guys. You can only get it on Amazon or your phone or something. So, anyways, I think that's what's going on, and that's why they want the CBDC. But they want they want this blockchain technology so that. You can be required to use biometric data to access money and resources. Now, and in the other be... call, you, you said that you could um, protect your biometric uh, data. Okay, so what I was mentioning is right now, and I believe in the future, we can do this. We can do this for a long time, forever, probably. You have to realize the data being collected is property, and this property creates a liability for the collector. So, like Google, that collects your data. Uh, has a liability to you in what's known as a data breach. We've heard this in the news before, right? Data breach, mm -hmm. you have to announce it and all this stuff. Well, this is how, how I deal with government agencies and private companies that want data from my client. They want data from my client, like a certain identifying information. So I ask the company, what uh, what's your data retention policy and what indemnification do you have for my client? Because you are asking for information that's not needed to provide the service or product that you want from that he wants. And so if you want this information and there's no there's no really good reason, even if there is a good reason, I want to know what accountability you have to my client. And if you don't have it and you can't get insurance for it, I'm not required to give it to you. It's not fair. So I'm using this right now to get privacy for my client. Privacy is a property right. So what yeah. I'm doing is I describe the property. So for example, my fingerprints, this biometric data, it's property. I'm the only one that has these fingerprints, right? Mine. Yep. Okay. So they're unique to me. If they're unique to me, it's a property right and it's an intangible property right. Ironically, it's on my fingers, but it's intangible. Okay. So I can describe it. I can describe my retinal pattern by saying it's my retinal pattern that identifies me. There's nobody else in ever that can identify, right? My face mm -hmm. is just like on my uh, driver's license record, right? My face is biometric data. They've been using it for, for years. We just accept mm -hmm. it, right? Okay. So when we can describe property, we can we can then do things with it. We can sell it. We can, we can make a claim on it. So what I'm showing people how to do is you take the biometric data that you almost can't 
get by in this world without giving up. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm saying, fine, Google, take it, but you're going to pay me for it. And so I, I, I describe it in a security agreement. A security agreement is a mortgage, guys. The oh mortgage is this is brilliant. Been, the mortgages have been used against us forever. Let's use them now against the system that's getting our data. So we put a lien on all this data. It's private property that up until now has been abandoned. So when you put the lien on the data, it, you're claiming the property now. It's yours. Claim it. How and long does it take to, to set that up? The day. What? Once I, once I write up the agreement, guess what? The use of your data constitutes an agreement. You don't need anybody to sign anything. You just write up the agreement and record it in your county, in the state, and then you impose a royalty on the use of your data, just like someone who's a songwriter has copyrights on the song. You're doing the same thing. It's intellectual property, okay? If you want to look it up, it's intellectual properties. This is the equivalent of that, all right? So we put this on there. Now, here's what I'm telling people. Everybody's putting all these liens on, on their data, right? Right now, my clients are, and they're doing it, and it's just for pennies. It's small amounts of money. But this, what I'm wanting to do is create a huge liability on the accounting records of the of Google, for example. Google's a publicly traded company, right? It has to know and account for all liabilities. How do you think it's going to account for a liability that it can't calculate? It doesn't know who's going to file what liens when, and how does it answer to its shareholders and its insurance carriers? This is an infinite unknown liability. What do you think is going to happen when all this, when it, this makes its way into the quarterly statements that it has to file with the SEC. What? This is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, this is we really own great. Stuff and we've been giving it away for free. It's just like the crazy example where I buy a bunch of products right at the grocery store. And part of what I'm paying for is the packaging. I want the packaging. I'm not going to carry water around like this, right? <laughs> All right. Makes sense. So I got plastic bottles. I got glass bottles. What do I do? I put them in a bin and I pay somebody again to take him away. Why would someone do that? Because he's going to make money off of them. Mm -hmm. Why can't I make money off of them? Because I haven't figured it out yet. By the way, I know how to do that. But I'm just saying, we're already doing crazy stuff like that. We're giving so are you getting paid stuff. for this? I can show you how to have a, make a, a huge amount of money with this stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, do you yeah, have yeah. a course for people to learn this? I, I didn't put a course for that, but I can get a business plan for you. I can show you how to do it. I can show you how to make money with glass and plastic and stuff very easily. It's a huge multi-trillion dollar enterprise. I mean, my gosh, moving I, craft I'm, around the world. Is no, amazing. I mean about your, um, uh, the, your, your, um, the liens. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the biometric data, <laughs> Sorry, the lien on the biometric data. Yes. I have a course on that. It's not published yet, but I okay. also, right now I do one-on-one. -on -one, so I work at all the kinks, which we've pretty much done this year. It's done. And so now everybody's following these liens. And so they, they're like, when they finally learn about it, they're like, how do I do it? And so I charge X dollars. I create the documents. And so in about a month, you're going to have access to all this information through a video series. You just watch the video series, you download the document, you fill it out, and now you know how to do it. And you can keep on doing it. You can show other people how to do it. And, and so yeah. are you getting, uh, people are getting really paid for from Google and stuff? They or can using if they our... want. They can if they want. But what, here's my, here's my long-term plan. Enough people do it. And then enough people are going to say, now what, John? More or less. And they can go and collect the money if they want. It could be in the thousands of dollars. It could be more than that, actually. What I'm thinking is, because these liens are assignable, I'm thinking we should have groups of people collecting all these liens and assigning them to a corporation that we can then use for financing because it'll have a huge stock value because oh. of all the receivables. It, it's like, it's like having a company that goes around to all the, all the people that own the copyrights and all the music we listen to, or that own all the music rights to all the music we like, you go around and you acquire all those rights. What kind of value you're going to have in that company at some point, huge value. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we have so much leverage, so much money from just claiming our data back and it's all secured. It's oh money. This yeah, is imagine so amazing. What kind of power we could have. <laughs> yeah. This is my, my thing is about freedom. My thing is about yeah. our God, God, our God given rights that are being trampled on right and left. And this, and this is amazing. So 
So I'm in on this. So um, this is, uh, you said it's going to be available in about a month. And so people yeah. can go to your website, Ace of Coins. Is it on Ace of Coins or the other one? Ace of Coins.com will link you to all these video courses. There's the divorcing the state, you know, there's, um, that tells you how to stop the trafficking in court. That tells you how to stop getting your butt kicked if you're in a divorce. You know, some of you guys are being really exploited by the courts. Yes. If you've already been through that mess. The course to shows you how to reverse what they did, reverse alimony, reverse child support, do something with the family. Don't let the court tell you what to do. This is not fair. So there's a course on that. Um, and then we have a team too. We have a team of people that actually will do the casework if you need something like right away. You know, you don't have to learn it first. Uh, then there's the course on, you know, security agreement on your biometric data. You're putting a lien on the collection of all of your data, your biographical data, your, SSN, We're gonna your do date this. of birth, your name, yeah, your retinal pattern, your face, your image, everything, the way you walk, all these things, your DNA, all these things are property. And we're identifying as property rights and we're putting a lien on it. And there's a royalty on there. And sure, you can get your pennies or whatever or save up whatever you can do. My thinking is put them all together and have this huge financial conglomerate that we can have power with. We can do lots of things with it. We can clean up a lot of things like technology. Why should the technology be used to exploit us? Why shouldn't it be used to enhance our, our lives and give us privacy? It should be, but it it's being be. used for the opposite. Yeah. So if we have money behind what we want to do, we can have some, get some things done. We can be effective. So anyways, Absolutely. there's that. And then I'm going to show people on, there's another course that shows you how to use easements and HOA covenants to get out of the property tax, to control the title and the possession of your property, even in a foreclosure uh, to deal with like, Fight BlackRock. You guys want to fight BlackRock? Use the easements and HOA covenants. Use it the right way. Wow. You want, you, you're paying too much property taxes. Well, why don't you just decide how much taxes you should be paying if you want to and allocate that money to the sheriff's office or to your emergency services. You do that. You don't need your county board of supervisors to decide what's done with your money. You and control the lien rights. Do the property taxes really go for the roads and stuff? Because, uh, no, what they do is the, the taxes are paid and then the budget's created for the next year and then they borrow the money. So it's kind of, it's indirectly being used. So what, what I'm saying is you take the, the hard money and allocate it that way. You're not using a financing system. Mm -hmm. So it's a little more complicated, but I mean, that that's a little more advanced, but I'm just saying the easements and the HOA covenants are very powerful and effective tools to control your property and property rights and defeat the banking system, mortgages, property tax, IRS liens, w city code violations. I mean, anything you want. Oh and gosh. I just, I just, I hope people that are going to be responsible with this because it's a lot of power, but it's going to make us effective because you have to realize we are the government. And so yes. what you do, what good is it for me to say that if you don't know what to do? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Well, I was just reading some uh, that our attorney general here in Hawaii wants to is asking, along with 21 other states, uh, 21 other attorney generals asking the U.S. Supreme Court about regulating the uh, social media platforms. And so well, I called her. Would. I'm just like, yeah. but I'm like, oh, my gosh, that is such a, that is such a violation look, of your oath look, of office. Let me, They're not let me, no, no, no. Let them let them let them. Here, here's why. Here's why you're fighting over 5 percent of the Internet. It's probably three percent. They're talking about three, three to five percent of the internet. That's but a that is a communist act. That is fine, when you fine. violate so the First Amendment oh, and your wow. right of free speech. Okay. But anyway, I don't want to talk about that. Let's say <laughs> so they're I have doing a question for you. All right, let, but let me say one thing. Let's say they're okay. doing that. Start using the dark web, guys. They're using it. What do we care what they want to do with three percent of the internet? We got ninety-seven percent over here. It's all encrypted. They can't touch it. Yeah, my my thing is is just 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 doing just for somebody in America, and I know that this country has turned communist, and I know the whole line yeah. uh, is is infiltrated by uh, Satanists, but and especially here in Hawaii, we are run by the mafia. But uh, but just for like uh, in standing, when when uh, when an, an attorney general says, "Yeah, we're going to violate the First Amendment, and we're going to be able to regulate what you say," blah blah, I'm just like, how can you even? They're Consider doing it now. that you could move to China. I know they are. Well, this community platform, guidelines. You this, hear this, this. Yeah, com community yeah, oh, this guidelines. platform. That's well, I, I had a conversation with yeah. them and, and told them they're a bunch of Nazis. But I have a question for you about yeah. silver and gold. All right. What do you think about silver and gold? Is that is that it's going a, up? Is it's it? It's a way to absorb some some risk in the dollar. So I use it for that. So I buy silver and gold 
as a temporary means to just stay, stay out of the volatility, the loss of value in the dollar. You get, you know the dollar's losing value. Okay, great. We got that information. So buy the gold and silver to to lose less. Lose less, yeah. Faster. Yeah, lose less than most people. Uh, you're not going to make get rich off of it. They're not going to let us have a windfall. They're not going to let the dollar, the, they're not going to let the precious metals go to the real market value in dollars. You're not going to have $1,000 ounce silver. They're not going to let us do it, guys. Use it traditionally like it's always been used to offset the volatility of the dollar or the loss of value of the dollar. But don't stay in too long. Don't be lazy and buy gold and just sit on it for 20 years. That's just stupid. Okay? I got to call it like it is. What you need to do is allocate some of your cash. If you're not sure where to allocate it first, like into an asset, put it in gold and silver for a while. But don't leave it there forever. Have a plan for it. Reallocate out of your precious metals. But it is a very good tool. And plus, it's shiny. I like it. It's, it's beautiful. Nice. I have yeah. I have a lot of silver and I always talk about Transworld Metals, ltd.com, ltd, Transworld Metals, ltd.com, you guys, if yeah. you are interested in that. Um, anything else you want to share with us, John? This was this was a kind okay. of a, a spontaneous one after our, our other live a, that we did on YouTube. And We could have more conversations. That's a big subject. And yeah. so I, I always like to talk in terms of solutions. I look at things yeah, as not too. necessarily a problem or or the the end. Like mm -hmm. if I identify a problem, I don't just stop talking there. I'm thinking, well, there's got to be a way to get around that or something. I'm all yeah. about actions. It's like, okay, yeah. what do we do to, and right. I love this idea of owning our own um, identity, owning our own face sure. and our, that's our biometrics. I mean, that's huge because they're using it, it. You can and it's so frustrating. It you can license when, it out to others. Wow. Cause when I, when, yeah. when I go to home Depot or something and I'm looking at myself in this, in the computer, on the screen, I'm like, Oh, I just get, I'm just, I feel yeah. so like violated. Like, yeah. Well, let's put a claim on that property and see how they like it. Yeah. Let's <laughs> do it. Idea? Okay. It costs you this much. <laughs> so you, this is going to be available next month. Uh, we're doing this right now, but as far as the video series goes, yeah, it's going to come out next month. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll let's do another video when when you have it out, and we can let people know that yeah. it's available, and and okay, and yeah. maybe I'll even take them privately through through something, or if you guys have somebody that takes people through it, because yeah, that's do. always fun. Mm -hmm. Accountability. Accountability is always good yeah. for people. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Let's do one more prayer. Woo. <laughs> Infinite intelligence, great spirit of all things. Wow, what a game we are, we came to play. Each one of us said, yes, I'm going to go forth and be at the, on the earth at this time in history with the awakening of the truth of what has been unfolding throughout centuries and who is really in charge of our country. But we are light beings and we are stepping forward in courage and in inner strength, doing our kuleana, doing what is ours to do. So that our keiki, our children, have a future and live in a world of peace and harmony and unity. And that we ask that this frequency, this a frequency of peace, harmony, and unity is spread throughout the planet right now, touching anybody that needs a little bit of hope, touching anybody who feels alone, that they have a spark, that they are not alone, that they are loved beyond measure, and they are guided. And we ask for peace throughout the world, peace in Palestine, peace in Ukraine, peace in Israel, peace in Russia, peace in China. We know that it is done. And we give so much gratitude for John and his journey and all of his support and help that he's having, having with this business, that it always be there. And so much gratitude for uh, just just him supporting people in this manner because this is so outside the box. And that is what's happening right now on the planet. People are, we are all waking up to start to live a completely new way outside the system in freedom and in peace and in love and in harmony with all of nature and all of humanity. And so it is. Thank you so much, John, for joining me right. again. Thank you. Much so. aloha, everyone. Uh, Aceacoins.com, check the description.